This is an example of using a 3 mm vessel sealer to do a fund application. The port placement is as you see here. The retracting ports are in the upper abdomen. The mid epigastric port is used to place a self retaining retractor which goes around the falciform and can grab the diaphragm to hold the liver out of the way without the aid of another assistant. Here you see the Babcock clamp being placed on the diaphragm grabbing just above the hiatus. This is a self-retaining retractor and does not need to be held, as mentioned. The left upper quadrant port is then used to retract the stomach down, exposing the gastropathic ligament. Here, the three millimeter JRS sealer is used to take down uh, what is very uh, transparent and see-through uh, gastropathic ligament. Occasionally, there is an aberrant left hepatic artery in this area, and that vessel is usually preserved. Because of the thin nature of the tissue, it is easy to tear after being sealed. The right cruce is then exposed. Care is taken not to dissect up into the hiatus as this increases the risk of hiatal hernia, but it is important to identify the esophagus, especially the anterior portion, so that it can be determined that a good length of intra-abdominal esophagus has been established and that the wrap is above the GE junction. Again, a, using the tips of the sealer to seal these tissues and then gently tear them is an atraumatic and a very hemostatic way to do this. The left upper quadrant port is then used to retract the stomach medially, and this exposes the short gastric vessels. This is an approximately one-year-old child weighing about uh, 12 kilos, uh, and here you can see that the short gastric vessels are being sealed using the sealer. Uh, the advantage of this technique is that both hands can be used to dissect uh, out the vessels um, and then safe seals can be made with limited spread of energy uh, to the stomach. The fact that we're using a 3 millimeter sealer also allows us to make our right-handed port a 3 millimeter port as opposed to a 5 millimeter port which we had done previously. This is an extremely safe technique which can be used well with residents and fellows as there is very limited energy spread. The other technique that can be used is to make two seals and then to gently tear the short gastrics with vessels this size, one to two millimeters, that is very safe and hemostatic as well. However, you can see in this limited, very limited uh, edited video that the time it takes to change the instrument uh, from the sealer to the scissor in order to divide the short gastrics is actually uh, minimal. Uh, and again, the ability to dissect and then seal uh, more than makes up for the few seconds that it takes to do an instrument change. We limit the amount of short gastrics we take, really taking only the top upper few in order to free the uh, greater, the higher aspect of the greater curvature from the spleen to allow for a tension-free wrap. Here you see some minor attachments between the stomach and the spleen and these can be um, sealed and then divided or sealed and torn as mentioned previously. I believe it's important to mobilize this until you expose the left cruise of the diaphragm. Again, it's important not to dissect up into the hiatus, but it is important to expose the left cruise so that you're sure that the wrap is tension free. Here are some posterior attachments and here we use the other technique we talked about is simply making uh, two to three seals um, and then tearing the tissue. And again, this can be used quite safely with the short gastrics as well. Here we're dividing some of the attachments. It's also important to dissect down and identify the posterior gastric vessel. Uh, this vessel um, can often tether the stomach and I think create um, some tension on the wrap which could create uh, some dysphagia. And here again you see us making two seals and then gently pulling apart the vessel rather than cutting it. And you can see how well we can grasp tissues and dissect with the three millimeter sealer not needing an instrument change. Once that part of the dissection is complete then we go to the posterior um, window. It's important to make sure that the vagus nerve is up along with the esophagus and this is a very um, blunt move um, in order to ensure that we do not uh, injure the esophagus or the posterior wall of the stomach. 
there's some mild attachments here that um, a lot we're taking with the sealer in order to better expose the um, patient's left croup. And this here you can see that we've shown that there's a good length of intraabdominal softness. Because we have limited our ports to three millimeter ports, um, we are putting the stitches in through the abdominal wall. This is a uh, 2O ethabon suture on an RB1 needle. Uh, and uh, as always, we put a single stitch curl repair in order to try and prevent uh, hiatal hernia in the future. Again, by using the three millimeter sealer, we have avoided the use of a five millimeter port, even in this larger child. Uh, and it is quite easy to put the needles in uh, through the abdominal wall. In general, we will leave the needle um, intraperitoneal until we're done with the uh, um, fundal plication, and then we'll remove all sutures and needles out through the trocar site rather than try to feed them back through the anterior abdominal wall. With the curl repair done, uh, we've inserted another stitch, and now we're bringing the stomach around behind the esophagus to form the wrap. Because of the extensive mobilization we did of the stomach, uh, not of the esophagus, you can see that the stomach comes behind the esophagus quite easily. We look for the area where we actually divided the short gastrics along the greater curve, and this is the portion of the wrap uh, that I like to bring um, around. Here you can see we're almost switzerling the esophagus and we do this at approximately the 11 o'clock position. We then have our assistant grab the um, retro soft geo portion of the stomach and hold it laterally while we put in the stitch. Uh, the first stitch is our top stitch and we try to go out to the greater curve just below where we had taken the short gastrics. Um, then we pull down on the GE junction and get a bit of the esophagus at the 11 o'clock position. Um, and that um, tends to lock the wrap into the abdomen. We take a small bite of the cruise. Again, the, the idea is to prevent the wrap from hurting up into the chest, and then the wrap portion of the stomach. And here you can see it's just sort of sitting there, and we go right under where we took the short gastrics. There's no tension here, uh, and the stomach comes around very easily. So rather than um, pulling the stomach around the esophagus or creating a tip, a twist or torsion, we're again whistling the esophagus. And we've now set the wrap within the abdomen and the upper stitch. And usually we'll use the left upper quadrant Babcock to pull the GE junction down and the fat pad out of the way so we have a clear view of the um, intraabdominal esophagus and we can make sure that all of our stitches are above the GE junction. I think one of the common mistakes is that, especially with a minimal dissection technique, is that the wrap ends up being uh, too low um, down on the uh, GE junction. In general, it's in general we'll put sure uh, the stitches, three stitches um, are um, not in low uh, so that we don't um, have the wrap down on the GE junction. Uh, we put three stitches in all our wraps. Um, it's also important not to um, curl in more of the stomach in the wrap. So here you see we go in uh, at the edge of the wrap or the edge of where the fold starts rather than going back behind it. That prevents us from wrapping in more stomach. Um, again, these can all be tied intracorporeally or extracorporeally, but again, the advantage of the three millimeter sealers, we have no uh, five millimeter ports, and most of the three millimeter ports um, will become uh, almost invisible uh, when they heal. Here you see the last stitch, and you can see that we're well above the G junction, and again, this is critical to ensuring uh, that there's not a failure of the wrap due to a uh, quote-unquote slip missing. Uh, this procedure in real time took 20 minutes. It's been edited down here uh, to uh, just about um, half of that. Um, but this is a very straightforward and easy procedure. 
and the use of a uh, right-handed three millimeter sealer allows for uh, excellent dissection, uh, limited instrument changes, and very safe use of uh, heat energy. Here you see the completed wrap, and it's, you can see that it's not too tight, it's well above the GE junction, uh, and sits nicely at the 11 o'clock position.